talking to us about the video. Good morning. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, um, acknowledge my co-authors, Pete Kleinman, Alex Christoff, and Ray Bryant. Pete and Ray work with me at uh, Agricultural Research Service at, at, in University Park, that's Penn State campus. Alex is a Penn State uh, professor. And, and I'd also like to give a shout out to Ron Sheffield. Um, he actually, uh, he and, he and Alex, uh, originally got the, uh, uh, funding to, to start this, to start this project. Although what we found out was, uh, was that we went ahead and, 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 and Ron had gotten sick and had to leave the project. And so Alex, basically, he's an animal science guy, and he was he's going to either have to give the money back or uh, find somebody to do the work and actually build the thing. Uh, so he came to us, and and that's what got us started. As it turned out, uh, we built out the uh, the concept that Ron had in his head, and while it worked really good on like manure liquors, uh, there were too many solid the the solids content of raw manure. Uh, made made it not work. So then we basically it gave us the ideas, it, and we went back to the drawing board, and then we ended up creating the uh, system that we're going to talk about today. Uh, you know, so we all know that for years, for centuries, manure was a valuable commodity. Uh, in some places, it still is. Uh, one of the problems is though is that is that with the the way we have our farm systems now, where we where we grow a lot of corn in the Midwest, and then we ship it to near the cities on the East Coast, and and then feed it to animals. We end up with too much phosphorus in the wrong place, while the folks in Iowa and Minnesota are still needing the phosphorus to apply to the field, and yet there isn't enough economic value in raw manure to haul it all the way back to Iowa where they need it. And so our impetus was to uh, then then ask the question: Well, what if what if the manure didn't have any negligible had had very little phosphorus in it? The farmer then could get the uh, value of the nitrogen out of out of his manure, and then concentrate that phosphorus into a into into an economically transportable uh, commodity. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so what we ended up developing was a mobile treatment system to remove phosphorus, and I know this is a very busy slide, and so I'm, I'm going to break it down one step at a time. And so what we do is, is manure comes out of the manure lagoon, it goes to an auger press, which does almost exactly the same job as a screw press, it's just we had one of these sitting around uh, when we started the project, so we used that instead. Uh, if I were to be, be buying a brand new one today, I would go with a screw press because we've had a lot of trouble with this thing. Uh, it's basically an auger press with the flights being farther apart in it. Uh, that removes 80% uh, of the total solids, and only 15% of the phosphorus is contained in those solids. So that is a relatively low uh, phosphorus uh, solid that is ideal uh, to be used as bedding, as everybody here has been talking about. Uh, the liquids then go ahead and go to this centrifuge. Um, that removes an additional 10% of the total solids, and 45% of the phosphorus is found in that. That is also a stackable solid, and it, it concentrates that P into a more economical form so it can be easier, easier transported. Uh, however, we still haven't dealt with the dissolved phosphorus, so the way we do that is we add a little bit of iron sulfate. We used to add polymer, but then I, I, I said, well, I don't think the polymer's doing anything. So we just eliminated it and found out, well, we didn't need it. Uh, and so we add a little bit of iron sulfate, and that's not much, two and a half pounds of iron sulfate per 100 gallons of manure. That converts the orthophosphorus into a particle, which can be taken out by the next step. And... Uh, and it, and you know, we just go on to that. And then that, then the liquids then go into this auto vac filtration unit. And the way this works is, is, um, is you start off the beginning of the day, uh, by running in a slurry of diatomaceous earth into this tray down here. This drum here 
this drum turns inside that tray towards us, and uh, there's a knife right here. And as the drum turns, the uh, the knife then cuts it up, cuts it cuts off the solids on it. So once you've got your filter cake built, we build up a three inch filter cake. Uh, it takes about 15 minutes to do it. Then uh, we run manure into that same tray, and the drum rotates in that tray, and the knife, the knife then moves in three inches over an eight hour period. So so your shift is eight hours long, and what it does is then as it comes across the top, uh, it picks up a load of manure at the bottom with the drum, as the drum turns, dries it as it comes across the top because we're pulling a strong vacuum to the inside of that drum. And then when it gets to the knife, the knife then cuts off your solids in a very thin layer of diatomaceous earth. And what that does is it gives you a fresh surface to go in and pick up another, pick up another load. So you don't get clogging it of your filter because you're constantly uh, providing a, a fresh surface, a fresh filter surface, built fresh filter surface. Uh, that removes the final 10% of the solids and 40% of the phosphorus is contained in that. Uh, and like the centrifuge solids, uh, these high P solids are fairly easily transported. And what you end up with is, is an effluent here that still has 90% of the nitrogen in it mostly in the form of ammonium. And, uh, and if you could see it here, this in the background here is the manure that we, the liquid manure that we were, we were pumping and putting into the system. And this clear stream right here is the final liquid coming out. And that is basically solids free and basically phosphorus free, depending upon how much ferric sulfate you were using. And, and so the highlights are, uh, we got 96 to 99 percent P removal efficiency. Uh, 99 percent of the solids are gone. All of the solids are stackable. They're about 70 percent moisture. Uh, most of the nitrogen is retained, 90 percent. Uh, gives an N to P ratio of that in, in excess of 50 to 1. We've even seen it as high as 2 or 300 to 1 in the P ratio. Uh, it's it's gone through that diatomaceous earth filter. The final process is a half micron pore size. So it's ideal for fertigation of crops. Uh, you can run it through a sprinkler system with no problem. Uh, and the pH, unlike uh, some of the other processes of removing phosphorus, uh, the pH is, is virtually unchanged by the process. Uh, what we found out was with, with the 95% P removal efficiency, um, it was costing about seven, seventeen dollars per pound of phosphorus removed. Uh, that works out to as a treatment cost, six point two five cents per gallon. And obviously that's a problem. That, that daily operating cost, uh, or that treatment cost for manure is way too high. And the rest of my talk is going to be about cost reduction and the things we've done since we patented this process. Uh, so, once we pat, once we, once we proved the concept, filed for the patent, which has now been granted, uh, we built a full size system. And so here's, we use two auger presses, goes to a larger centrifuge than what we had with that rented equipment that we did in our pilot project I just showed you, and a much larger auto vac unit. And so here you can see a little better, there's the tray where the, where the DE slurry in the morning to build your kit, your filter cake goes into and where your waste goes into. There's the drum that turns and it turns this direction and the, the knife is right over here on this side and then those solids get cut off and fall right down there between the two trailers. So we built this and, uh, and, and one of the things that and, and we built that so that we could, we, we wanted it to be on trailers so that it could be mobile and we could move it from farm to farm to farm. The idea being that a large farm, uh, you know, say a thousand cows plus, is going to have a system like this right there. But we, in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of small farms that are 100 to 150 cows. And the idea was that if we built it in a, as a mobile system, uh, or a system that could be mobilized, uh, maybe 10, 10 farms would go together in a consortium and buy one of these and it would rotate them between their farms and take care of their treatment needs or uh, possibly a, uh, 
uh, a manure hauling industry which could become a manure treatment industry. And so that's why that's why we forced it. We did we got away from DAP tanks because they were too large to lend themselves to a mobile operation. And and so that so that necessity for it to be a mobile system uh, is, is what limited our choices of, of what equipment we used. Uh, there are several uses for those solids, as I suggested. The those relatively low P, uh, but but most 80% of the total solids. Uh, a lot of farmers like to use that for bedding. Uh, you could sell sell that high nutrient solids to organic farmers and mushroom growers. Folks out there that have have uh, uh, centrifuges now, um, I am told that that mushroom grow, growers and small nurseries will basically fight over those those centrifuge solids. Uh, it could also be used for feedstock for energy generation, but like someone here just said, uh, I talked to a, a company that is currently using layer manure uh, to generate electricity through a gasification process, and they said that if we could have our, if we could get it down to 30% moisture, remember we're, we're at 70% moisture when it comes out, uh, if we could get it down to 30% moisture, then uh, they would love to have it because there's more BTUs in the cow manure than there is in what they're currently using. Uh, another possible product, and I hope everybody knows about cowpox. If not, take a look on the web forum. Uh, this guy has, has basically, he has a screw press, takes his screw press solid, and he's now pressing them into those little starter pots for your tomatoes. And he tells me that, well, he told me four years ago at this conference, uh, he was here talking, and I talked to him afterward. He says he's getting more money out of selling those little cow pots uh, than he than he gets from his milk. So look him up if you ha if you don't know about it. So our new work, our current work, uh, is as I said, that 6.25 cents per gallon treatment cost was way too high, and so what we what we've worked at is lowering the daily operating costs. We've done that in two ways. One of them is uh, through incineration of the filter media, so so that, that diatomaceous earth and and manure uh, combination um, is pretty high. You know, on that six by six unit, the, the commercial size unit that we that we built, um, we use a thousand pounds of diatomaceous earth per eight hour shift. Well, at fifty five cents a pound, you can see that that's a pretty high. Uh, that's a pretty, that, that contributes a lot to daily operating costs. But what we've found is that we can incinerate that at, uh, 550C and basically put it right back on the drum. It works just as well the second time. And I'll show you an example of that. Uh, we also came up with a new, new reconfiguration. And with that new reconfiguration, we've got our treatment costs down to just a little bit less than one cent per gallon. If 75% uh, P removal is sufficient, and I'm going to go over both of those. Uh, so this is this is what happens when we incinerate it and reuse it. Uh, this is fresh diatomaceous earth. Uh, second use, uh, virtually uh, the same. The flow rate wasn't it, it filtered just as well the second time. Uh, we incinerate that again and reuse it again. Our our flow rate does go down a little bit. And if we incinerate that one and use it a fourth time, uh, it goes down quite a bit. So I would suggest that we basically stop at, at, at this point, um, and, 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 and then, you know, get rid of that or find a way to rejuvenate it. And so then the, uh, the new configuration, basically it's the same as everything all the way up to the chemical treatment. But then the liquid, instead of going straight to the auto vat, the liquids then go to a different type of, of centrifuge. This is a decanter centrifuge uh, that we were currently using. Uh, it operates at about 25,000 times, or 2,500 times gravity. Uh, this, this stacker centrifuge operates at about 12,000 times gravity. And so after we chemically treat it, we go, we treat, we come there, and that, liquid coming out of it is about 74% uh, 
phosphorus free already. But the bad side is we don't have a stackable solid anymore. The fine, the solid reject is actually about the consistency of heavy whipping cream. And we wanted all, all solid stackable products. So we send that stackable, that, that fine, fine solid reject, uh, to the auto vac. And then that gives us the very fine solids in the diatomaceous earth. And that is what gets us down to about 75% phosphorus free. That is also about a four to one nitrogen to phosphorus ratio, which is just about ideal for plant needs. So if you're a farmer and you can remove 75% of the phosphorus from your manure, you're probably never going to have a problem as long as you're applying that at a nitrogen demand for your crop. Uh, further current work, uh, continued testing of that full-scale mobile treatment system uh, and implementation of a, a small research size unit, whereas that drum on the full size unit is six feet diameter and six feet long. Our small research size unit is one foot diameter and one foot long. Uh, and we use that for optimization of the system and for substrate testing so that we can just grab a sample of a farmer's manure and then design a, a system that would, would meet his needs. Uh, and also testing of different manure sources, the dairy manure, which is what we started on. Uh, I know this is a little bit busy, um, and so I actually highlighted the the important parts, we took the full-scale mobile treatment system uh, to a 90-cow dairy. Uh, there they had had their uh, slots in the floor with, with in a concrete floor with the manure storage below it. Uh, we, the 150-cow dairy actually pumps their manure out into a tank. 2,700-cow uh, dairy, um, they, want, they have a screw press. Because they actually, they actually bed on, um, on the manure solids. These first two actually bed on fine sawdust and coarse sawdust respectfully. Uh, and, uh, the other thing about this 2700 cow dairy is that, uh, is that they also add a lot of lime in order to cut down on mastitis in cows. And then we took it to a 5500 cow dairy that also had an anaerobic digester and we tested it on all those four different manures. And the punchline is that, is that in all cases we got greater than 90% phosphorus removal and we were operating it with a little bit less, uh, ferric sulfate because we, we didn't think that 95 to 99% phosphorus removal, even though the system is capable of that, we didn't really think it was necessary. So we cut down. Um, on the amount and, and still got greater than 90% phosphorus removal. Uh, at two of the farms, uh, the 2700 cow dairy and the 90 cow dairy, we actually took samples of the various uh, products of the MAFX system and uh, sent them into some uh, to the smell testing lab at Penn State. And what they do is they hire a, a panel of 10 people to come in and sniff it and basically say it smells bad or it doesn't. And if, if, how would you like to tell your, your, your wife that that's what I did today for a living. I went and smelled manure. Uh, but you can tell that these guys are pretty accurate because, uh, because of all those 20, 20 samples that they smelled, their, their, their results are remarkably similar. You can barely see the error bars there. And so what they found out was that, uh, that basically uh, the raw manure uh, to the diet to the effluent that would be uh, put on the, on the field, then that's their, their, your final liquid that has the 90% of nitrogen in it. Uh, it reduces odor by about a half, which you may say is not a big deal unless the farm is right next to town and is constantly getting complaints for his neighbor for the smell of the manure he's spreading on his field. Uh, the other solids also smelled better than raw manure. Uh, we, uh, from those same two farms, we also uh, tested the final effluent for, uh, for bacterial removal. There we go. 
And uh, what we found was 84% and 80% respectively uh, total coliforms removed, and, uh, and E. coli was reduced by 86% and 81% respectively. Now, I mentioned that the one 2700 cal farm also added a lot of lime. And one of the questions they specifically asked us was, you know, they were saying, you know, we're, we're getting concerned because the pH in our fields where we're applying this final liquid manure is going up and up and up. And we do have some farm, some places where we can't apply liquid manure either because it's too wet in the spring when we're applying manure and we can't get, get our trucks in there, but we could apply a solid. And so they said, is there a way that we could recover some of those calcium carbonate equivalents? And so we tested that as well. And, and what we found was that uh, the carbon, carbon, calcium carbonate equivalents removed um, could be as high as 79%. In other words, it was following the phosphorus. If you're removing phosphorus, you're also removing those calcium carbonate equivalents. So if they went all the way to an auto vac, uh, then they could actually get 79% of their calcium uh, carbonate equivalents back uh, to be applied where, where it would be beneficial for them. Uh, and if they only went as far as the centrifuge, they could get 44%. Uh, as I mentioned, we're also, we've also moved into, I, I'm almost done. I, as we've also moved into testing other, other species. Uh, this is a couple of samples of hog manure, and we tested it on two different grades of diatomaceous earth. The one that I mentioned that has about a half micron pore size, that's our standard 140F. The 120F is actually finer, so the, so the, Pore size is smaller. We wondered if that might make a difference. Uh, in total phosphorus uh, removal, it really didn't make much difference. Uh, and we got like 97% P removal from, from on either filter media from two different farms. Uh, this flow rate, um, I, 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 this is a flow rate on the one by one. I should mention that, that point two is what typical dairy manure runs on, on the one by one machine. So what this means is that the hog manure actually flows three to five times faster than, than the, uh, uh, than da typical dairy manure does. So we could actually treat between three and five times as much in a, in a, in a one day shift if we were treating hog manure instead of dairy. And with that, I will shut up, and uh, you will you can notice down here that I've updated it instead of uh, instead of seventeen pounds, uh, seventeen dollars per pound of pea removed. We're down to, we're down now to about nine dollars uh, of pea removed. That's four ninety five percent pea removal. It equates to about two and a half to three cents per gallon treatment cost. But as I mentioned. If 75% P removal is good enough, we have a configuration that can go all the way down to less than a penny a pound. Thank you, Clinton. We're going to uh, save questions. We'll have to save questions till catch them at lunch, sit at this table, find them this afternoon. Our next speaker is Tang Lim, who will be talking to us about a separation system for swine finishing barns.